Hey, Homestead Prepper. Okay guys, this is the block that you're going to see in the video that I got um, all taken apart and everything. Use the electrolysis, the acid, you know, the penetrating oil and, and a hammer. Uh, I, I just want to say that I decided uh, not to use it even after going through all that. Uh, that's what you're going to see in the video. And the reason for that is the machine shop asked, you know, you know, why 305 and uh, I told them it was for a Jeep and they said, well, you're going to be worlds better off if you uh, go with a 350. And they said it's going to be cheaper, it's just going to be better, and it's going to have more power. And So what I've done, guys, is I have that in uh, stasis right there. That's grease on it so it can't re-corrode. <laughs> and uh, I've got a 350 right here. Okay, now this is uh, one of these high nickel blocks. And this is actually, if you look at the number, that is a 302, 350, or 327. It depends on the uh, crankshaft that you put in there. Of course, you know, it could turn into a, you know, a 383 if you put a 400 crank in there. And that's my freshly ground 350 crank. Those are some world product heads. And there's some other parts. And I want to mention now about my backup channel, which is uh, Gearhead 327. And I'm going to be doing videos uh, mainly around the cheap Jeep. And that was what that originally was going to be for. Uh, and now this is going to go in there, and I, uh, I got some video of putting the cam bearings in, and I got some video of putting these uh, core plugs or expansion plugs in there. Whatever you uh, do, guys, you do not want to call those freeze plugs. Boy, the internet police will get all over you on that. But uh, Gearhead 327 is going to be dealing more with motors and the cheap Jeep project. I, I don't know. I may mirror it on uh, HSP. Here's my transfer case, and that is a uh, SM420 4-speed. That's the one that has a real low granny gear in it. hope to get that rebuilt. But uh, I just wanted to share this with you about this engine before we uh, watch it. Now, any of the principles huh, that you see in the video is going to work on any, any type of engine, okay? And like I said, this, this is actually usable. But, um, okay, well, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's start it up. Alright, I was able to get, yeah, that looks nasty, doesn't it? Like something out of a horror movie. I was able to get all of the manifold bolts off except for this one. I tried to beat this with a hammer and break this off. I mean, obviously, this is not going to be reused, uh, as is this head. But uh, I think I can pull the cylinder head and the intake off all in one piece. And this over here, I had all the head bolts come out except for this one. You can see it's rounded off, and this one right there. But I think I've got a, a cure for that, being that the head is junk. I think we're just going to cut that off. Now, if this head were in good condition, then I would just weld a nut on the top of that, and I'd weld one right there, and I'd try and you know get it out that way. But being that it's junk and it's probably not reusable, I think we can just cut that off, and then when it sticks up, we can get a pipe wrench, and we can pull it out. But... Um, like I said, I hope this block is good and can be cleaned up with an overbore. You can see the number on it. That, that'll tell us that it's a 305 of the 1980s variety. So let's, um, let's see if we can get that stuff taken off of there. Guys, I got to tell you that one of the nastiest cuts I ever got was off of one of these broken spark plugs right here. That ceramic is very sharp. Well, let's see if we can uh, get this cut off here. Tap it with a hammer and see if we can loosen up that uh, cylinder head right there.
Oh, there we go. Hopefully you saw how easy that was. Well, it, uh, it looks like we had some water intrusion here. It just keeps getting better by the minute. You can see those bolts are rusted right there. I've tried multiple sockets, tried to hammer them on, and I don't have a socket for that I have to get one. But you can see those are really rotted off. So what I'm going to have to do is grind those off too and then drill and tap them. Well, old Krusty here is just full of uh, challenges. You can see right there that bolt has been rounded off. That's a uh, 9 16 And I tried to hammer a uh, 13 millimeter on there and it rounded it off some more. I've got a 12 millimeter here and we're going to just try and, try and get that off. Otherwise, I'm going to have to weld a bolt on there. Come on, baby. Ah, well, we lucked on that. And guys, if you go ahead and run this out, you'll never get that thing off of there. So while it's in there, oh, it came right off. Sometimes it sticks on there. So that's a 9 16 I guess it's swaged down to a, a 12 millimeter. We need some manly He-Man tools. I guess I'm not going to be able to reuse this, huh? Oh, that looks nasty in there. I don't even know if that can be saved. That's gross. I don't know. Like something was living in there. Well, I guess it's screwed. All that work. Alright, well, anyway, that's how you take apart a crusty engine. Alright, I soaked it with uh, TV Blast for WD-40 and it's a little rusty. That'll hammer out. It's pretty locked up. In there. I'm going to have to do something creative to get that out of there. Well, you guys saw how corroded the uh, bottom end of that engine is. I uh, tried to beat out one of the pistons and it didn't want to come out. So I have uh, tried something alternative right here. And that is uh, good old muriatic acid. Now, some people, you know, say you can put Coca-Cola in there and vinegar and, you know, marble mystery oil and, you know, I tried PB Blaster and WD-40, that, that didn't seem to work too well. But uh, this, uh, I think Muriatic is going to work a lot faster than uh, pretty much anything. And if it eats the pistons up, well, oh well, they're going to have to be replaced anyway. I'm just uh, mainly concerned about the, uh, the block. That's what I want right there. And if I can salvage the connecting rods and the crank, that, that'll be bonus too. But that stuff is working on it. I've got some uh, baking soda standing by. I've got some there in water and I've got a bag of it around the corner there if I need it. So 
when that has worked long enough I'll pour that in there neutralize the acid and rinse it out and then I'll do the same thing the other side and then I'll try and beat those pistons out anyway that's the plan Wow, it really looks like it's excited. <laughs> That's because I put some baking soda in there, guys, to try and calm it down a little bit. May have to put a little more in there. That acid is very reactive. All right, I'm uh, doing the other side, as you can see. I don't want to get too close to it and ruin my camera. But uh, I'll let that work for probably about an hour, and then I'll uh, dilute it with some baking soda and we'll rinse that out of there. Baking soda, like I said, neutralizes the acid and it makes it non-dangerous. Uh, non Alright, let's let that work. There it is. What a pain. I've never had one that difficult before. So I've never worked on an engine this corroded before either. So, all right, well, one down, seven more to go. Two down. Harmonica balancer. Alright, got that sucker out of there. Boy, what a pain in the butt. You can see that this, uh, how corroded this block is. I, I'm hoping 30 thousandths will uh, clean it up. It should. I still got to get that cam out and those lifters are seized in there. So. Well, anyway guys, that's how you uh, how you do it and I just got to take a hammer and finish beating out those three last pistons right there.